and welcome to Mountain Patriot Homestead. Well, the day has finally come that I had promised that I would start the video series called Old Days, Old Ways. Now, as I had previously told you, if you had watched some of my earlier videos, when I am talking about this series, I am meaning that I'm going back, I'm not going back you know, to the 1800s, 1700s, even early 1900s yet. Um, I'm going back to the mid 1960s to mid 1970s. Now, for a lot of us, that doesn't seem like it was that long ago. But when you look around us at um, the age of science and technology that we're living in, uh, it can seem like, you know, it was eons ago. So, I thought that I would do a series of videos. I didn't want to do them all in one because it would make it entirely too long. But I thought that I would do a series of videos addressing what life was like back in the mid-60s and 70s. Um... The reason I chose that era is that was um, my early childhood. And so I thought that it would be maybe of interest to some of you uh, just to share maybe a little bit of nostalgia, but also uh, for some of you, it'll be history because you weren't alive back then. So um, I decided that I would divide it up and we would you know, just reminisce about uh, everything from um, the family, uh, family life, uh, education, society. Uh, maybe we can even talk a little bit about food. You wouldn't think food would be that different then, but yeah, there, there were things with food going on that, you know, we don't have now and things that we have now that we didn't have back then. So, um, just, you know, covering a little bit of, of all type of topics of life that was going on during that time period. Now, the uh, very first thing that I thought would be a good starting point was family life back during that time. Now, of course, uh, you read history books or you look back at history, uh, a lot of it, even, you know, some of your stuff on the History Channel on TV, um, they, they cover more of the um, oh, upheaval that was going on and uh, wartime and uh, civil unrest and those type of things and yes uh, that was going on it was definitely going on however there was also a whole other side of the coin for other folks that um, it really you know life goes on no matter what's going on in the world beyond life back at home still goes on and um, that's why we're entering Memorial Day weekend this weekend. And uh, I would like to, I would like to give my solemn salute to all of those soldiers and sailors and Marines and support and all of those that sacrificed, that uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice that we remember on Memorial Day because without them and their sacrifices we wouldn't be enjoying this as we are we may not be speaking the same language that we're speaking and uh, certainly not enjoying a lot of the freedoms that we take for granted that we don't even think of as a um, we think of it as a right and not a a gift and uh, so I want to thank, of course, you know, if they gave the ultimate sacrifice, they can't hear me. But for those families 
that uh, lost loved ones to war, I want to say thank you because you sacrificed as well. And, um, you know, there, there was a lot of things going on back in that time period, back in the mid-60s to mid-70s. Uh, a big change was taking place. But, you know, when you look back through history, uh, every generation has had change of some sort or another. Um, and so, you know, that time period was no different. But for for at least our family, and this is how I'm going to approach these videos, the, uh, this covering this topic. The reason I chose this time period mainly was because I lived it, I was there, I can put it from my perspective. Now, that being said, when I'm talking about stories of things that we were doing, how life was for us, it could have been totally different for somebody else, for their family, even the neighbor up the road. It could have been totally different. Um, and so as we go through these videos, uh, bear that in mind that just because I'm telling you my story of here's how things were, I'll try to also include just some generalizations of how life was for other folks. But mainly I'm going to be talking about how it was for us because I can speak from 100% experience of here's how things were for us. So I thought that um, the logical place to start with this is the family. Uh, the family. Family, family dynamics. Um, you know, for our family, um, we had my dad was in the household, my mom was in the household, had a little sister. Um, we back in that time period, we lived close to, and by close, I mean very close to all of my relatives on my daddy's side. Uh, I was born in Western North Carolina near the mountains and um, all of my kinfolk, I mean, I grew up with, with cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff and grandma and grandpa and, and everybody was just, we were out in the country, but we pretty much were surrounded by kinfolk. Uh, just about any direction that I walked in, I could walk to a relative's house. So, um, even though it wasn't the Waltons and we didn't all live in one house, we lived very close. I could walk through the woods and go to Aunt Lean's house. I could walk across the field and, and through a little patch of woods and go to Uncle Rothy's house. I could walk up the driveway and go to Grandma and Grandpa's house um, and had like I said, had cousins all over the place, went to school with my, with my cousins, um, and we'd take on certain holidays. When we went on vacation, um, we would go up into the mountains and visit Aunt Hattie and Uncle Silas and, you know, all the, all the relatives that lived up on the ridges, <laughs> you know, so it was, uh, even though, like I said, we lived out in the country, we still lived very close to our relatives. Now, um, regarding the family dynamics, uh, like I said, I had my mom and dad were both in the house and um, my daddy worked outside the home. My daddy was a carpenter and a very skilled home builder. And he, um, he could build a house from the ground up, uh, everything from the dirt work all the way to the finish work. I um, mean, he, uh, that's what he, that's what he did. And he would leave out early in the morning and come home um, in the afternoon. And then if, you know, if it was summertime, there was garden to do and there was critters to feed and there was always stuff to do. Um, my mama, 
my mama, when we were young, uh, my mama was at home with us. Uh, once I started the school, mama went to work at the um, sewing plant that was nearby where a lot of people back then worked, uh, ladies worked. And so she worked at the sewing plant there in, uh, in North Carolina. And um, when my little sister was born, she quit working and stayed home, took care of her until, you know, she got, uh, got old enough to go to school. <clears throat> and by then we had moved to East Texas. Um, and so, you know, we had, my, our mama was at home. When we got home, mama was home. Um, and uh, back during that time, if my parents went somewhere, we went with them. Uh, it wasn't you drop the kids off at the babysitter. It wasn't uh, you get some, you know, get one of the kinfolk to watch. Um, I remember staying with grandma and grandpa when my little sister was born. And I remember there was one evening that we actually were watched by a um, friend because mama and daddy, daddy had uh, built a, um, had built a business for a lady that had invited daddy and mama as guests for when they had the grand opening. They had this big dinner and all of this. And so they were invited, they went to that. And that's the only time that I remember mom and daddy leaving us with somebody while they went out. And um, of course they were home by, I think, you know, probably 10 o'clock. So it wasn't like they were gone long. So um, the family dynamics for us were, we were always together. Um, pretty much anything we did, we did as a family. Um, and that means everything from working in the garden to um, doing yard work to uh, doing household chores. Now, there was a division there as far as who done what. Now, like I said, it was me, my sister, my mom. So my daddy was a little outnumbered. He was the only fellow in the family, but... Um, there there were certain things the ladies the women of the house were expected to take care of the household chores daddy took care of the lion's share of the garden um now that didn't mean that the rest of us didn't get out there and work in it we all got out there and hoed and pulled weeds and that type of thing but he'd get out there and he'd till it up and and he would do a lot of the planting and things like that which you know, I, I was daddy's girl, so I was a shadow. I'd get out there and I'd follow him around too. But um, daddy took care of a, a lot of the outside stuff with help uh, because if not, you know, I mean, want more hands make light work or whatever. But um, the, the household stuff though, daddy was born in 1918. He was my mama, he was 21 years older than my mama. And so he had a very firm sense of, you know, what was women's work and what was men's work. And now I know that may sound archaic to some of you. You're like, oh, what? What a male chauvinist. Um, well, you, you have to remember in 1918, the women took care of the household and the women took care of a lot of the outside chores too. And the men were usually off logging or something. So, um, yes, there was a very firm division in who took care of what. Uh, I remember one time as a teenager, uh, my daddy said something about um, it, he, him and mama. I'm going to tell them mom and daddy here. Thankfully, neither one of them are around to whack me in the head. But um, my mom and daddy both, as they got older, they both snored like freight trains. And so uh, they finally decided in order for either one of them to get any sleep, they set up separate bedrooms. And so uh, my daddy had a little twin bed in his room 
And one day he come through and his bed was still messed up from the night before. And he said something about, my bed's not made. And me, you know, I, I didn't mouth off much. But that day, I, you know, I'd been busy helping mama with something, which I was never an inside chore person. I'd have rather been outside anyway. And I said something about, well, why can't you make your bed? Well, that wasn't the answer my daddy wanted to hear. And he said, well, three women in this house and nobody can make the bed. I'm not supposed to be making my bed. Well, you know, again, you know, in today's society, it would have been just, oh, you know, he's, he's so sexist. Well, no, that not, not for him and not during that era. Um, that was just that was what was supposed the women were supposed to take care of the inside chores now at back to the gardening you know daddy done a lot of the hoeing and and planting and tilling and all of that sort of thing in the gathering but then once it was gathered and it come into the house then it was my mama's turn to do the preservation she done a lot of canning and um you know it that's hot work that's hard work and um, so there was a, a lot of time that went into preserving the food uh, and you know it's just like hunting you know my daddy done most of the hunting now when I um, he, I went hunting too and, but uh, you know that we hunted and then once the meat was um, once it was processed, then mama took over the part with the either freezing it or canning it or however she was going to be doing it. So again, you know, there was very firm lines in, in who did what. Um, now, another thing regarding a family in the household uh, at least in our family, is a, a child didn't backtalk. Backtalking would get you in some serious trouble. Uh, my mama didn't like mumbling. I mean, you know, that talking under your breath, uh, you may as well just said it on out loud because, no, she didn't like that backtalking, even if it was, you know, muttering under your breath. You didn't do that. Um, and uh, uh, if you, there was company, Kids weren't supposed to be underfoot. If you had company, this stuff of, you know, you've got a bunch of adults talking and the kids being all up underfoot and, and making noise and playing and being distracting, mm -mm, that wouldn't cut it neither. They'd get you in trouble real quick. So, you know, as kids, we knew we needed to get the heck out of the house or go to another room or go somewhere because if you're going to be in a room where adults are having a conversation that uh, seen and not heard was a rule that was strictly enforced. So, um, you know, and we just knew to mind because um, we knew our parents loved us. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. You know, I, I know that I, I feel I was probably more loved than I deserved a lot of times. But I also know that uh, retribution would come swiftly if um, I crossed certain lines. Uh, one of the things was um, uh, my parents, you, you didn't tell lies. You tell lies and, you know, that, no, that, that was not going to cut it. And uh, so, I mean, there was, um, there was discipline in my household. And uh, a lot of people might just... <gasps> that's terrible, that's child abuse. No, that was good raising. Uh, that's why I have never spent a night in jail. Uh, for one reason, I was um, more afraid of my parents than the police. So um, that's just, <laughs> that's just, that is truth there. So, um, you know, it doesn't mean I ever, that I didn't ever get in trouble or there was things I should have gotten in trouble for that maybe I didn't get caught. But as a kid, um, I knew what the rules were. So, um, 
you know, very strict guidelines as far as that was concerned. Uh, extended family, uh, same thing went, you know, nowadays somebody can't even raise their voice at a kid that's theirs, much less somebody else's. Um, I remember a time that uh, it didn't matter whose kid you were, if you got caught acting up, uh, they may yank you up and wear your britches out, send you home to your mama, and your mama wear your britches out. Um, so, uh, you know, extended family. You didn't go over to your kinfolks house and act goofy because, you know, if they didn't get a hold of you, you knew you was going to get it twice when you got home. So, you know, that... Uh, there wasn't no nonsense going on. Now, I'm not trying to make it sound like, you know, all that happened is we got beat to death or something when we were kids. That's not so. We had to behave. Um, but uh, as far as family went, we were respectful. Um, and not just because these were our, our relatives or because these were our parents. We were respectful because we were taught that... Um, to respect others, you first had to be respectable. And uh, I think that that's just a, something that's missing maybe a lot today is people are, they don't know how to respect themselves and so it's difficult for them to respect others. This horse you hear running up on the porch is Pepper. She's having a good time. But, you know, that is just... Um, some of the things that went on within the family when I was growing up. Of course, there was always a lot of stuff uh, going on, but that was just a little bit of the family dynamics uh, as as a child, as a young child. Um, you know, just, just uh, day to day with the family. And I'm sure as time goes on and I continue these, I, I'll probably think of some, some other things. And if I, if I do, if, you know, I pop back to another topic that we've previously covered. I hope you'll forgive me. More or less, this is, this is just telling stories and reminiscing with you of uh, back in the day. Uh, if you like these, let me know because if, you know, if these stories and if these uh, tales of, you know, back whenever I was a child are taken well enough, I'll consider going further back to the era of like when my mom was a child and then my daddy was was a child so um just let me know of what you think of these if you think these are something that you're interested in if any of these are stories that um, you'd like to continue hearing just let me know but that is the first portion of old days old ways and I do hope you enjoy it I'll try to come up with some others that are interesting and that um, hopefully we can just look back laugh and remember the old days thank you for joining me here at Mountain Patriot Homestead I hope you come back again real soon I love y'all have a good afternoon Mountain Patriot Homestead Signing out.